talking to experts and shark attack survivors. Yeah, that's right, Fred and Sarah. We are getting quite the weather event down here in Folly Beach tonight. A lot of heavy rain, a lot of lightning and thunder. Now, we're not here for weather, but weather is very much a part of this shark story we're about to tell you. The experts tell us that sharks have very poor eyesight. And after a weather event like this that moved through tonight, the ocean gets churned up, especially in the shallows. And they say that when you go swimming after an event like we just got here tonight, you slightly increase the risk of a very unwelcomed encounter. When we head to the water, a possible shark encounter is always on our minds. Look under, there's like three. This video is from the pier at Myrtle Beach this month. Sharks in the surf and extremely close to the beach. The injury on this woman's foot is from a shark bite at Folly Beach, also this month. She was surfing, just sitting on her surfboard, waiting for a wave. It felt like someone was pulling me. And then there's Patrick Thornton from Ballantyne, bitten by a bull shark or a black tip at the Outer Banks a few years ago. He was in the water body surfing after a storm. It put puncture wounds in my back. Patrick told me the shark just kept coming at him. His sister was watching from the beach and told me it literally jumped out of the water at him. But he did what you are supposed to do if you ever find yourself on the business end of a shark. He was wrapped around me, so I started hitting him on the side. And then I used my elbow, too, to kind of jar him loose. Amanda Brewer swims with sharks, both in cages and out. They're so graceful. They're so intelligent. They're so misunderstood. Amanda is a shark conservationist and gets about as close as you'd ever want to get. In fact, she took this picture of this great white shark. She, too, says, fight punch, kick, and go for the eyes if you are being bitten. If you kind of are just laying back and, and letting it happen, um, they could mistake you further for prey. But if you're fighting back, um, then they're likely going to let go and keep moving. Most shark attacks are mistakes, the result of murky or stirred up water and just bad timing. If you happen to see a shark, don't freak out and don't make sudden splashy movements to get out of the water or back up on a boat. Most shark bites happen in only three feet of water. So how do you avoid an unwanted encounter? Well, don't swim when sharks are active. The experts say early morning and late evening, a bad idea. Don't swim near a pier where people are fishing and chumming the water. And be leery of swimming near sandbars and inlets. That's where the sharks are hanging out for fish to eat. So if you're swimming in areas like that, then you're definitely increasing your risk of, of an encounter. All right, two more things to consider. You know, a lot of us like to take our dogs to the beach. We even like to swim in the ocean with our dogs. But the experts told me that swimming with your pet in the ocean and their erratic movements can attract unwanted attention. Also not a great idea, they say, to swim with a lot of jewelry on. You know, when you're in the water and the sun reflects into the water, that jewelry can often mimic a fish scale. So just a couple of tips there to consider as you head to the beach this summer for a very safe summer, we hope. One more thing, the experts also tell us you are more likely to be uh, involved in a car accident on your way to the beach than you are to be encountered uh, with a shark in the water. So just some perspective and context there. Reporting live at Folly Beach, I'm Bill McGinty, NBC Charlotte. All right, Bill, thank you.